Hello and welcome. The Breakfast Club was one of the most popular teen movies of the 80s, starring Molly Ringwald, Judd Nelson, Ali Sheedy, Emilio Estevez and Anthony Michael Hall. It touched a cultural nerve for young movie fans around the world and the stars were quickly branded as part of Hollywood's so-called Brat Pack. Molly Ringwald had just turned 17 when the movie opened in 1985. She already had a string of movie and TV credits, including Different Strokes, The Facts of Life and the movie Sixteen Candles. Now, if you've never seen the film, it's about how five very different teens cope with each other when they're thrown together on a day-long Saturday school detention. The performances are terrific. And Molly Ringwald is still a busy actress today, as well as being the mother of three children. But back then, as the film was about to open, I spoke to Molly by phone to find out about the making of the film, her interactions with the other stars, and what else she had on her plate at the time. You're working on a new film, obviously. Um, I'm going to be starting one very soon, yeah. Well, what's it called? Pink something or other, is it? It's called Pretty in Pink. Pretty in Pink. Ah. And, but in. Yeah, in, right. <laughs> Right. Can you tell us, what, uh, I mean, obviously you want to talk about The Breakfast Club, but what, what is the, the Pretty in Pink about? It's, um, well, it's kind of a, a new old-fashioned love story, and it's by the same writer of Sixty Candles and Breakfast Club, John Hughes, and it's about a girl in high school, a very poor girl going to a predominantly rich high school, and it's so hard to explain, you know, <laughs> before you even start doing it. Right. So but, right, and she sort of uh, runs into all, sort of con all sorts of um, conflicts there, I guess, does she? Yeah, yeah. One in particular is that this, um, she gets invited to prom by a rich guy, and there's all this social difference and everything. Oh, ah, right. And she's a, she's a great character. So it sounds like a touch of Cinderella there, isn't it? A bit, yeah. <laughs> who, uh, who else is going to be in the film with you? Well, we're casting it now. Nobody set yet except for me. Right, okay. Well, we'll find out more about that later. So, uh, listen, I must say I enjoyed The Breakfast Club. I was a little bit tentative about it, um, um, I guess because I didn't know whether or not they could pull off putting five uh, young people into, uh, basically into one set and uh, have them talk most of the time and, and it worked for, uh, for a movie. Yeah. But, it, but it certainly does. Yeah. The, what, what do you think the key was to it? A lot of pre-preparation or, or the, just well, the script? You know, and the characters were very well defined, and um, they were interesting characters. And everything that we said wasn't meaningless, you know, rubbish. We, every single word that we said, you know, tied in with something else. And it mm. meant something. And um, I thought it was just interesting. They were very interesting characters. Therefore, you know, it's was, it was something that I think is about everybody can relate to to at least one of the characters, you know, and it's really nice to go into a film where you can really understand and relate to it. Absolutely. T tell me something, how many of the uh, the cast, uh, I know you knew at least one, uh, but how many of the others did you know before you started to do the film? Um, well, I, I knew Michael, and um, I knew Emilio a little bit, and I knew Jed a tiny bit, and I didn't know Allie. At all, right. No. So, uh, I presume that you got to know each other fairly well um, right from the start of making the movie. Oh yeah, we got to know each other very well. And became friends, presumably. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's like any, you know, other thing. We'd fight, and we'd make up, and we'd, you know, go out, have fun, you know, stay in, go crazy together, you know. It was pretty much like it was in the film. Um, well, that's that's exactly what I was wondering because I, I we weren't that hostile towards each other, but we you know we went through the same range of emotions and everything. No, no, exactly. I, I assumed that you would have been much friendlier, but I just wondered if being friendly um, and sort of in an ensemble situation made it any more difficult to to turn away from the the off-screen uh, friendliness to develop the characters. You know, Judd's sort of aggressive rebel and so on, and uh, well, make it work. Judd was really the only one that was a, a method actor, per se, you know. None of us really, I'm not a method actor, and I don't think any of the other ones are. So he was really the only one that kind of stayed in character off screen. Did he? <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he wore those boots all over the place, <laughs> you know. And, well, Judd's a little bit like that anyway. There's a lot of Judd in, in that character, I think. But, um, you know, I, when I'm, I'm an actor, when I leave the set, I really leave the set. 
So I, you know, the characters, you know, Claire's feeling toward Allison didn't, it wasn't like my feeling towards Allie at all. Mm. So. And what about, uh, what about Allie? I mean, she, hers is a very interesting character. It seems to be very withdrawn. Yeah. Almost reclusive. So what, what was she like uh, away from the screen? She was, well, Allie's totally different from that character, but at the time she was a bit of a, recl recl a recluse. She was a little bit. You know, she, she writes a lot, and she kind of stays by herself and doesn't go out a lot. And, right. But, I mean, she's nowhere near, you know, extent to what Allison is. Right. And, and what about Emilio? Is he, uh, how, how is he different? He's not so uptight as Andy is. You know, he's more like Andrew when he loosens up. Right. Right. But, um, and then Michael is totally different from Brian. <laughs> yeah. how, how much totally different? I mean, what, what, what is Michael totally, like? Totally, in every sense <laughs> that you can possibly think of, he's different. <laughs> Name, name a couple of them for me. Well, he's not as hung up about, you know, academics and, you know, succeeding. He likes to succeed, but he's not um, that uptight about it. Right. <laughs> so, so, in coming together, did John uh, take you aside for a couple of weeks and rehearse you at all? Yeah, we had a, a two-week rehearsal period. No, we actually had a three-week rehearsal period. And after about two weeks, we decided it was ready to, to start. And we took the gun and started it. And, you know, before that, when we were all cast, we got together a couple times and, you know, just kind of got to know each other. Right. right. And uh, the, the film was actually shot where somewhere outside of Chicago, I gather. Yeah, it was in the suburbs in Rose... No, uh, Death Plains. We stayed in Rosemont and we shot in Death Plains. So in where? Death? Death Plains. Yeah, Illinois. Right. How do you, how do you um, spell that? D E S. Right. P L A I N S. Oh, Death Plains, right. It's actually Sweet Death I think, but they call it Death Plains. Right. And is that a suburb or a small town? Um, excuse me? Is that a. Oh, it's a suburb. Oh, right. It's not really a town at all. <laughs> right. Now, the title of the movie, is, does, that ha does that actually. Um, is that part of the sort of slang used by, by high school uh, teenagers over there, or is it a, does it have any other reference? Well, it's not that many people here even know what it means. What, what it actually means is uh, John's from Chicago, and he went to the high schools, and he was talking to some high school students, and he asked them about detention, and they said, what do, you, what do you call, like, you know, detention? They said, well, Saturday morning detention is the breakfast club, and afternoon detention is tea time. So he took Breakfast Club, and that's what he named it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's not something that, it certainly wasn't something that I uh, had when I was at school. Uh, we didn't have any sort of uh, Saturday detention at all. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know of other high schools out here that have Saturday detention. Is, is it a common thing in America? In some schools, yeah. I mean, my school has, like, Friday afternoon detention. I don't, they might have Saturday. I don't know. I've never been in detention. <laughs> school I'm going to. I was in detention once in my life, but that's it. All right, all right. So, so what about the reaction to the characters? I mean, as you say, they, they are very clearly, uh, even finely delineated. But, uh, I mean, you obviously also had to bring certain things to them, you know, what, what you had in your own character makeup and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, do, 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 um, do people over there, the kids who've seen the movie, the parents, recognize those characters? Do, do they see them as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's incredible, the reaction. You know, it's it's been a big hit here since it opened. And, you know, the kids are just, you know, they're saying I was exactly like, you know, Claire. I was exactly like the guys say I was exactly like Brian in high school. Everybody relates to one or two of the characters combined. Mm. You know, and I think Claire was the character that I least related to out of all of them. When Claire I, was the one you least related to? Yeah, I mean, she's totally different from me. That's why I wanted to do it. <laughs> you know, I thought it was a challenge because, you know, I'm certainly not the rich prom queen type. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not spoiled and I'm not all that, those things. And so I thought that it'd be really interesting to try and, and find all the sensitivity and the compassion and the intelligence behind those kind of girls. So, so who did you relate to in, in the film? Which characters? Well, let me think. Probably out of all of them, 
Allison, I mean, not to the extreme. You see, the character of Allison, when it was written, was a lot less extreme than it than it actually turned out, which I thought was okay because, you know, Al Allie just put her own, you know, stuff into it and made mm. it what it was. That's great. But if you take that and tone it down a little bit, that's probably what I would be. Mm. But not to, uh, not to any part of any of the boys' characters at all? Um, no, not really. No. Mm. And what about John? He, this is, uh, when you do uh, uh, Pretty in Pink, obviously that's what, that'll be your third movie with him. Right. What, what, what do you think his secret is? Why, why is it that he seems to sort of be able to put his finger on the pulse of, of teenagers' life and attitudes and so on? Because he's a big kid. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because he likes kids and he understands them and he doesn't, you know, patronize them. You know, when I feel like I'm talking to John, I really feel like I, I'm talking to him. I'm not under him or, you know, there's no age difference really. We're kind of like on the same level. Mm -hmm. and that's the way he is with all it, with me, with Michael, and, and that's nice. And he hasn't forgotten what it's like to be a teenager and all the traumas and because you know, cause adults really tend to trivialize kids' lives. They don't remember what it's like to, you know, to go in on Monday and have a term paper due and not have it in your hand and what it really feels like, mm -hmm. you know? Little things like that, because then you have all the grown-up problems to worry about. But he hasn't forgotten all those. I don't know why exactly. Mm. And so when he's directing you, he is he directing, actually directing you, or just kind of, I don't know, working among you, if you like? It's more like a collaboration than, you know, director, actress sort of thing. You know, he's not the kind of person that will yell cut from across the room and, like, yell out his directions. You know, he's very, you know, he comes over and, and talks to me about it. He's real good. Right. He's not directing this one, though, Pretty in Pink. He's only producing it. Is he? And right, he's written the script, though. He wrote the script, yeah, and he's producing it. Right, right. And Howie Deutsch is directing it. And so just, uh, I think, um, apart from yourself, I think uh, Judd's character is probably going to get out here, I imagine, get quite a bit of, quite a bit of attention. Um, really? Well, I, I don't... Oh, you yeah, you guys are real straight out there, huh? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I... Well, it's true. I remember I got so much slack off of that one word in six candles. Oh, what, saying what? Remember in the beginning when, when they had forgotten my birthday? Yeah. <laughs> and what are you going to remind me? I have, um, I have, well, I say I can't believe this, you know, they, you know, forgot my birthday. And I happened to use one bad word, and God, all the interviews that I did, everybody would bring that up. Oh, really? By the way, they really talk in America. <laughs> <laughs> it was hysterical. Oh, well, I, that didn't strike me as unusual at all. Really? No. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, John has gotten a lot of attention here also. Judd. Judd, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's really because he's the, um, he's the, uh, the catalyst, if you like. Yeah. I mean, he's the one who gets everybody going. Yeah. Isn't he? And, yeah. and you, you said that he was sort of a little bit like that off the screen. Oh, yeah. So what would he sort of uh, uh, pick on you and uh, pull your leg a little bit and tease totally. you? Totally. <laughs> totally. What? Did you say totally? I did totally, yeah. <laughs> All the time, yeah. So how, how, is, uh, how does that work for you then when he's doing it off the screen as well as on the screen? I just kind of got used to it. I mean, he didn't do it all the time, you know, but I just got used to it. That's just the way Judd is. He's very funny. He's very, you know, he's all over the place. There's all this energy, you know, and he's just bouncing off the walls. You know, we all kind of got used to it. Oh, well, the little I know of you, I imagine you'd be just as cheeky back to him in, in yeah. <laughs> away from the set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, was th those scenes, particularly later on in the movie, where you were sitting down, uh, I think it's upstairs from memory, uh, and sort of confronting each other, uh -huh. um, how, how difficult were they? Because they were really, I mean, I can imagine, I, I saw the, the film in a small preview theaterette with like six or seven other people, but I imagine in a packed cinema, uh, you could hear a pin drop. Uh, what, what were they like doing those? I mean, did you have to work yourself up to, a, to an emotional pitch to do them? Well, it was hard because, you know, it was, it was a long, long, long scene. You know, pretty long for just, you know, dialogue. You know, no action whatsoever. And I had to, 
they did everybody else's, John happened to do everybody else's close up before mine. And and I was crying through most of that, you know, mm. that whole thing. And so I had, and I feel that you have to really act off camera as well as on mm. for the other actors, you know, it's part of the job. So I was crying like all week, <laughs> mm. essentially, and it was really difficult. But then once you cry for a while, it's just like, you know, it's so easy. Is that right? Yeah, well, that's the way I am. You know, if you cry for a long time, it's just like you're, you wear your emotions on your shirt sleeves. And any minute, you know, somebody would say, boo to me, and I would break tears. <laughs> so, and also with Judd there, I mean, Judd can get brutal, you know? And really? I was, and I was off camera while he was doing this, you know, close-up, and he was saying this stuff to me, and then actually, God, I go, God, Judd, you're really, you're really brutal. And he goes, oh, God, I'm saving the best stuff for you. <laughs> and then when they had the close-up on me, he just went, he went crazy. Oh. <laughs> that's the way he is. He's really supportive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's uh, very interesting, actually. Um, tell me, how did you, um, how's Dad for a start? Oh, yes, I forgot. He tells you hi. Oh, great. He's, he's and great. he's well and, and uh, enjoying himself, no doubt. What? He's, he's well and enjoying himself, is he? Yep. Oh, good. Good. And did you, uh, you know, did the family, not just you, enjoy yourself out here? Oh, we had a great time. We had a great time. I mean, you really, the Australian people, you guys are so nice. You really speak well for your country. Straight? We're straight but nice. No, it's yeah, a little straight. <laughs> there. No, but you are, though. So I've never had such a good time going someplace. You know, usually when you go someplace, you have fun, but you don't, you're really looking forward to getting back home. Right. And right. we just, we're really sorry to leave. <laughs> well, we were sorry to, to have you go, but maybe you'll be able to come back again for another movie. Oh, yeah, maybe pretty big. Right, right. And that's going, to, that's going to be shot whereabouts? Um, well, there's a big battle going on right now. It's either L.A. or Chicago. Oh. Probably L.A. Ah, right. Right. Because John wants to do it in, in uh, Chicago, presumably. Um, actually, John wants to do it in L.A. now. He lives in L.A. Oh, does he? Now he does, yeah. Oh, right, I see. He's made a big move. Oh, right, okay. And that'll be finished, what, by sometime sort of um, three quarters of the way through the year, by the end of summer, I guess. Well, it should be out. No, we're going to do it right. Yeah, we're going to do it June, July, and August, and then it'll probably be out the same time as Breakfast Club the following year. Right, okay. And do you have anything else on your plate? Uh, Lisa mentioned something about a possible Broadway show. Oh, no. Uh-uh. No? No, I was thinking about it, but no. No, okay. Well, you've done the movie instead. Yeah. Right. Okay, well, listen, thank you very much for taking the time to, to chat to me. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, all the very best. Give my warmest regards to your father. I will. And uh, as I said, we hope to see you out here sometime or other. Yeah. Maybe, maybe just for a holiday. What? Just for a holiday, perhaps. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. All right. Okay, talk later. Cheerio. Bye. Bye. Molly is currently in the television series Riverdale, but also has two movies coming out in the next year or so, a thriller called Pursued and a mystery drama called Montauk. In recent years, she's also appeared in the Netflix trilogy of teen romance films, The Kissing Booth.